How's it going everyone? Manus Spider here, bringing you an episode in the Pokemon TCG series. Today, I want to be looking at the Sword and Shield theme decks, Rillaboom, Intellion and Cinderace. Take a look at them and see which I think is the best theme deck, and which theme deck you should pick up and buy. So I do quite enjoy these new theme decks, and I enjoy them for the reason that they're not overpowered. They haven't come into the meta and just dominated completely and I feel like that's actually a good thing. Too much power creep, creep in a game can be quite frustrating and I feel like these three theme decks that have come in are very average. They're not so powerful that they just stomp over the previous theme decks that are in the game and I still feel like you can still play the older theme decks quite well and still get quite good win-loss ratios with them. So without further ado, let's jump in and let's look at the three theme decks. Now what I'm going to be looking at is I've played only 10 games which, with each of those three decks. And from those 10 games, I want to look at the win-loss ratio and how I feel about those, those three decks. How they've played, what's good, what's bad about them. Now what's important about this video is it's my own opinion. It's my own experiences with these three decks. So if you have a differing opinion or even different experiences with these decks, let me know down in the comments below what you've seen has worked, what you've seen hasn't worked, and how it's worked. So if you do have different opinions, please let me know. I'm very interested to see how these decks have performed for you and seeing how you've got them to perform because each player plays differently, even with the same deck. So starting off, I want to jump in and look at the Rillaboom deck as it was the first one I picked up and bought and I'm a sucker for grass types. So instantly looking at our stats over here, it's not a great win-loss ratio. Played 10 games and I've won five games. So I'm sitting on exactly 50% with the Rillaboom deck. And taking a look at the Rillaboom deck, it is in an awkward place because of the fact that there are two big fire decks in the current meta. You've got the Cinderace deck, which just got released, and you've got the old Charizard and the Queen deck. Those two fire decks are played predominantly on the meta. Um, you will often run into them and because of that it makes this deck very difficult to play because you're constantly playing into your weakness. The only way around that is running the Snorlax. Now, the Snorlax is very very good and there are ways to play it and I've won against both the Charizard and the Cinderace deck uh, with this but I've lost more. Um, so looking at the deck overall, it is a very decent deck because you've got a nice spread of uh, very well hard hitting Pokemon and you've got a spread of very good supporter, supporter Pokemon. So in terms of your good heavy hitters, you've got your Maractus, you've got your Snorlax, and then you've got the Willaboom. They hit very, very well and these are the Pokemon you want to really focus on for your energy. Coming off your support, you've got your Whimsicott, great support because Cotton Ride's got a 50% chance of just shuffling your opponent's Pokemon back into the deck. It's amazing, but it's 50% chance. Otherwise, Leaf Step, 50 energy, a uh, 50 damage for one energy, great. Your second supporter comes in the form of Elder Goss and Gossifler even, in the sense. Gossifler lets you get your support your basic Pokemon out on your bench super quickly. And Elder Goss's Blessings of Fluff is what makes this deck really, really good. In the sense that you're able to get three energy out of your, de out of your deck and place it straight on your bench Pokemon. It's amazing, and it's a great way to charge up. So Eldegoss is a fantastic supporter Pokemon. When it comes to your first active Pokemon, Maractus, Maractus, especially if you're going first, as in you're not attacking on your first turn, Maractus is amazing. Powerful needles, you can get super lucky with this. If you get those two heads, you're gonna knock out whatever Pokemon your opponent has down, in most cases. There are a few exceptions, but if you manage to get those two heads, whatever Pokemon your opponent has down is probably going down. Um, in the theme deck. Not, I'm not talking outside in general Pokemon, I'm talking about within the theme, uh, the theme deck format. And even if you only get one of those heads, which is what you're going to get on average, you're still throwing out 60 damage. Miraculous is also very nice and tanky with 110 HP. So in terms of your active Pokemon, it's great. Snorlax I would never recommend as your first active Pokemon. Start on the bench and charge up with that Elder Goss. Uh, looking at your trainer Pokemon, this deck's got a good spread of trainer Pokemon. It's got a lot of good fetch mechanics, which enables you to get your answers out of your deck and a lot of draws. Especially with the uh, Lycor family and searching on deck for the energy cards, Blessing of Fluff, 
you've managed to thin out your deck very, very quickly. You need to be aware of how many cards you have left in your deck. Especially when running cards like the Professor's Research, you're gonna be drawing a lot of cards. So be very, very careful. Now, Switch is very important to this deck. Switch enables you to swap out your Pokemon with only bench Pokemon. We all know how it works. What it combos with brilliantly is Rillaboom. Now Rillaboom's drum beating, you can't use uh, consecutively on two consecutive turns, unless Rillaboom hits the bench. So what you can do with Rillaboom is use Switch to swap out one of your bench Pokemon, and then retreat your bench Pokemon back into Rillaboom. This enables you to use drum beating twice in a row. So be very, very careful and hold on to your switches until you need them. If you use it, if you use switch early game, make sure you're getting a lot of value out of it because it's a great tool for later on in the game to be able to get Rillaboom to hit twice in a row, which can really, really surprise your opponents because your opponent will know that once you use drum beating on your next turn, you can't use it again. So they might throw out their heavy hitter to try and deal with Rillaboom. But now, if you are clever and you can do that switch mechanic, you can then get Rillaboom off two turns in a row. So be careful. Now, as I said, the biggest problem that this deck runs into is the abundance of fire decks in the current meta. Just those two is enough to cause problems for this deck. So whilst it does hit very hard, if you're not able to charge up Snorlax, you're in a serious problem with this deck. Now, Snorlax can do incredibly well by itself if you can get him charged, charged up which is where, again, the Elder Goss really, really does come out. So if you can get a Snorlax out early and you completely shut down your opponent, you do have a chance against those fire decks. So running up against them, focus on getting Snorlax out on your bench and charge up as quickly as possible. Don't bother too much throwing energies on your other Pokemon. Focus on getting Snorlax online. That is the best advice I can give you for running up against a fire deck. Um, so the win-loss ratio of this deck is 50%, unfortunately. 10 games, 5 wins. Um, and a lot of that's attributed to running up against the fire decks. Also to lose a few games to laser focus, which I was, which has, I've seen, seem to see a lot more of it recently since Sword and Shield. And I do think that it might make a comeback because it's doing very, very well in this current format. So that is my experience with the Willow Move deck. It's a great deck. It performs very well but it doesn't perform very well in the current meta because it only really does well in terms of weaknesses against the Towering Heights deck. Uh, it's the only deck at the moment that's really being played that has grass weakness. So you do shut down this deck very, very well. The fact that the Intellion deck and the Unseen Depths deck isn't really weak to it. Most of Unseen Depths is not weak to grass. And because of that fact, it does make the Willowbroom deck a little bit lackluster because you're not really getting advantageous matchups very often. More times than not, you got disadvantaged matchups, which is unfortunate. Moving on to our next one, the Intellion theme deck. Exactly the same, 10 games, five wins. So again, I'm sitting with a 50% win-loss ratio with this deck. Uh, with regards to why, it's a bit of an odd case because as I just mentioned now, there are a lot of fire decks in the current meta. So you would think, as I did, that this Intellion deck would perform very well. And the only reason I think I've gotten 50% wins with this deck is because there are so many fire decks. I find that out of, like, out of context, this is the weakest of the three starter decks. But in the current meta, it does perform relatively decently because of the amount of fire decks out there. Now, I do feel like this is a deck that I need more practice with. It's a deck that I'm finding a little bit more difficult to play because it's not as good at getting energies out there. It has Mantine with Water Reserve, which allows you to get three energy cards, but the difference is they go to your hand. Now, that slows down energy placement for this deck. The Miller Room deck, as you saw, is blessing a fluff, which gets your energies onto your bench directly. The Cinderace deck um, has abilities to put energies from your discard pile back onto your active Pokemon. Whereas the Intellion deck has ways to get energies from your deck into your hand. Which is a little bit awkward because, yes, you're getting value in the sense that you're getting to thin your deck and you're getting your energies out. But the difference is the energy going straight to your hand and you're not dealing damage. The 
Uh, Elder Goss version, yes, it's from your deck straight onto your bench, and yes, it's a stage one Pokemon. Whereas Mantine is a basic Pokemon, and those energies are going to your hand though. So, it's a bit of a trade-off. Mantine is also slightly tankier. Um, so it is a bit of a trade-off. So take that as you will. But I do find that the Intellion deck struggles a little bit when it comes to energies. It plays slower than you would like it to play. And because of that, I'm finding it quite difficult for it to perform very, very well. It also struggles in the sense that your Pokemon that are your damage dealers require three energy. And because the deck doesn't have a way to accelerate that outside of one trainer card, which is the NG switch, which you only have one of, there aren't other ways to get the energies down on your Pokemon fast enough. So your heavy hitters, I'm looking at Kingler with Chlorend, 90 damage, um, or an additional 60 damage if the Pokemon has damage counts on it already. Heavy Pincers, one energy for 40 damage, and yes, you discard the top card of your opponent's deck, it's not enough. It's, it's just not enough to be great. Um, up against a fire deck, it's okay. But for your stage 1 Pokemon to only deal 40 damage with that 1 energy, and then its next move requiring 3 energy, it's a little bit slow. Intellion is actually a very good mid-game Pokemon. Unfortunately, yes, it's a stage 2, so it takes a while to get there. But the fact that it only requires two energies is actually really good. It's very helpful. It does only deal 100 damage though. So don't expect Intellion to be knocking out and KOing a lot of Pokemon in one shot. Um, but it does have ways to mess with your opponent. As your silent shot discards a Pokemon from the uh, a card from the hand, my apologies, and Hydro Snipe bounces an energy from the active Pokemon back to their hand. Be aware of this. If you knock out one of your opponent's Pokemon, you still have this option. So be careful when you get a knockout on your opponent's Pokemon, always say no, so that the energy goes to their graveyard. Unless you want the energy back in their hand, which there's very few cases of that. So be aware that when you get a KO on your opponent's Pokemon, if you select yes, you're essentially giving them a free energy. So be careful on that play. Uh, and then your next heavy hitter, and probably your main heavy hitter, is Dreadnought. Dreadnought's great. 130 HP, decently beefy. Vice Bite, your 60 damage, plus 30 for every energy in your opponent's Pokemon retreat cost. This can add up amazingly, so be aware of this. And then Lockjaw, 130 damage, and it can't retreat. So, Dreadnor, very heavy hitter. And Kingler, pretty decent heavy hitter. And Intellion, pretty decent heavy hitter. Support cards, uh, support Pokemon, sorry. You have a Cromorant, which is a pretty decent starting Pokemon because Water Arrow can hit your opponent's bench, uh, which can you can use to put damage counters on them, which performs quite well with Kingler. It's a pretty decent combo, and if you know your opponent's charging up the bench Pokemon, it can be decent to just get some damage down on them. Two energies, Water Gun, 50 damage, which is pretty good. But the problem comes with this deck is because it doesn't have any way to um, to attach energies in a fast manner. It has no way to ramp its energy growth. It can be a bit of a hindrance because it's turning, putting you one turn behind your Krabby or your Tutor or even your Sobble's energy count. So be careful attaching too much energy to your supporter Pokemon. And then moving along to your Kingler, um, oh sorry, your Mantine. Water Reserve is great. Mantine as your first Pokemon is fantastic, whether you're going first or second. Now, Mantine, if you're going first, is de easy enough to charge up with your Wave Splash to deal 60 damage. But it's fantastic if you're going second for Water Reserve. It's one energy and it gets three energies out from your deck into your hand. So use Mantine as your battery. You've got two of them, put them to good use. Thin out your deck from energy so you're not getting bad draws, well, awkward draws, uh, and fill up that hand of yours. So use Mantine as your battery. And then, like I said, this deck is a little bit difficult to play in the sense that you're not dealing a lot of damage with it and it doesn't play very, very quickly. So this is the deck that I feel I need to play a lot more to really refine its playstyle. As of right now, I'm finding it the most difficult deck to play from the Sword and Shield decks and I'm finding it in the most awkward position in the current meta. 
because it should do better because of matchups, but I'm finding it's not. So if you find a way to play this deck and it is a strat that works for you consistently, please do let me know. I'm very interested in this deck and I feel like it's got a lot of untapped potential that I haven't quite got to grips with yet. So I am placing this further down the list and I want to see how it performs in the future. So I think this is one of those decks to keep an eye on and let me know how you're feeling your experiences are with it. When it comes to trainer cards, nothing really out of the ordinary st steps out other than energy switch, which is one of basically your only ways to get your energy game on point. Um, other than that, it's the same as the other ones. Uh, again, watch your deck. Be careful that you don't draw yourself out. And now, moving on to the deck that's performed best for me is the Cinderace deck. Now, this is the deck that I thought would be the worst walking into this because of the current meta. Because of the overabundance of water decks, in the sense that you've got the Unseen Depths, which is doing still doing pretty well. You've got the Intellion deck, which came out, which should be in a better position. You've got the Kyogre deck, which you're still... Sorry, Unseen Depths is the Kyogre deck. You've got the Kyogre deck, you've got the Intellion deck, and you're still every now and again seeing the Torrential Cannon deck coming out with um, Blastoise, as well as... Uh, sorry, it's those three decks. So you've got three water decks which are performing relatively well in the current uh, meta with in the theme deck meta. And yet, this Cinderace deck for me has an 80% win-loss ratio. It's done very, very well for me. And taking a step back out of the current meta and looking at the three theme decks individually, the Cinderace theme deck is very, very well constructed. It works, it synergizes, and because of that, it plays very easily. So in terms of a pick up and play, the Cinderace deck does very, very well. And looking at the cards, you can see why it combos so well. It's got everything it needs. So starting off, let's look at our Pokemon and let's look at your supporter Pokemon before we get into your main Pokemon that you want to be charging up. It's got a Sudowoodo. 100 HP, so he's decently tanky. One energy, that's all you need for this Pokemon. Double draw, draw two cards, and flail deals 10 damage for every damage counter. You won't use that very often, but every now and again, can actually come in handy. I've gotten some wins off of it, so be aware of it. Because it's strong against normal type Pokemon, which there are a few. Now, Sudowoodo as your first active Pokemon is great. Because you only need to commit one energy to it, because it also has a one energy retreat cost, which is great and it gets you draws. Yes, double draw doesn't deal damage like spike draw does from the uh, Groudon deck, which is unfortunate, but double draw, you're drawing two cards. It gets you card advantage. He's relatively tanky, and once he's taken a bit of damage, you just hit your opponent with flail. And because you've got 100 HP, you can take a few hits. So in that sense, he's quite nice. As for our next support Pokemon, we're looking at Dubwool. Now, Dubwool is a bit of an odd, odd supporting Pokemon in a sense. Now, there are very few occasions where I'd want to get Dubwool to 3 energy to use Double Edge, but they do occur. But Dubwool's main strength is its survivability. It's 130 HP, so it's decently tanky. It's a normal type Pokemon, so it's only weak to fighting types, uh, which, again, there aren't many. You've got the Kyogre deck. Um, other than that, you're not really seeing a lot of fighting type Pokemon at the moment. So because of that, it's actually in a pretty good position. And Cotton Guard is amazing. It deals 30 damage, and you take 30 less damage on your next turn. Don't be surprised if this double just blocks your opponent for 2 or 3 turns. Which you can use to charge up your bench. So if you're in trouble, you can throw a double in, and it's going to sit there dealing average damage and it's going to sit there for a few turns just absorbing damage. <coughs> because of that, Double is very very good in the sense that it can just sit there. And if you're in a bit of a pinch, it can buy you time. So it is decent in the sense that Cotton Guard can slow it down and if you need it, Double Edge can deal a bit of damage. 120 damage is decent but be aware you deal 30 damage back to yourself. So. Be careful using Double Edge. Now, over to the Pokemon that do really well. 
First active Pokemon, you're looking at Sudowoodo as your best choice. I actually want it as your best choice. Sudowoodo or Drumper, depending what you want to go for. Now, Drumper is a card that when I first looked at it, I neglected it completely. I thought it was very average, very meh, and I wouldn't use it very often. When I started playing this deck, I realized how valuable Drumper is in this deck. It's 130 HP, it's a normal type Pokemon, which is actually pretty good in the current meta, and a two energy Dragon Pulse for 80 damage. However, you discard the top two cards of your deck. First look at this card, I thought it was very bad. Well, not very bad, but very average, and a card I wouldn't rely on very often. Playing the deck, I've realized that it is great. Especially, especially if you have the first turn, as in not attacking on your first turn, but getting the first evolution out. Trumper's Dragon Pulse is going to knock out the majority of basic Pokemon in this game. In the theme deck, ladder, as always. 80 damage on essentially your first attack is crazy. And you're going to put your opponent in a very awkward position. Drumper can sweep. I've got quite a few games we're riding off of Drumper, I've gotten three prize cards. I've literally gone down to three prize cards just using Drumper. Because it just deals so much damage so quickly that it becomes very, very difficult to deal with it. And it's got 130 HP, which makes it pretty tanky. There's not that Pokemon that are gonna be, not that many Pokemon early in the game that are gonna be knocking it out. Even going second, I'll be happy with a Drumper as my first active Pokemon. No, I'm not getting my first attack out. And yes, my opponent's got the chance to get the first evolution out. If they don't get that first evolution, there are not that many Pokemon that can take the hit. You're looking at um, Maracas, you're looking at Snorlax, you're looking at Mantine, and you're looking at Drumper, or you're looking at um, Sudowoodoo from these theme decks. So the, the rest of the basic Pokemon, Drumper knocks out. And even those he doesn't knock out, you're taking away the majority of their health. You're taking away 80% of their health. Now, the drawback with Trumper. Two retreat cost. So you're rarely going to be retreating him. And now, Dragon Pulse discards the top two cards of your deck. Now, this is a stage where you've got to get a little bit lucky with it. But there's ways to mitigate that. Now, how do you deal with that? You deal with that by using Flame Cloak. Flame Cloak is a one energy attack which two of your Pokemon has, Cinderace is the other one. It's dealing damage and it's retrieving energy cards from your graveyard, from your discard pile, sorry, and attaching it to this Pokemon as a way to easily charge it up. Now, this works so well with this deck because it enables you to not worry too much about Trumper, but it enables you to retreat super easily with this deck. You look at, sorry, if you look at Ninetales, one retreat cost. Sudowoodoo, one retreat cost. Trumper, fair, two retreat cost. The entire score bunny line, one retreat cost. Wulu, one retreat cost. Double, granted, two retreat cost. Flame Cloak is a way that you can comfortably retreat your Pokemon and be able to get that energy back. So you don't have to feel bad about retreating. Yes, the damage is not that high, but the damage is still there. So you're still getting damage off and at least you're getting a way to bring back those energies. And then Firemen, 70 damage. Ninetales hits relatively hard. It's a pretty reliable Pokemon. Use it quite wisely. It is one of your heavier hitters. So be aware of it. And the nice thing with Flame Cloak is, a lot of the time you only really have to worry about attaching one energy to it. Because by the time you're bringing in Ninetales, your opponent's probably KO'd your Drumper. So you've got at least two energies in your discard pile. So using Flame Cloak, you can bring that energy back. And the energy you would have put on Nine Tails to charge a Fire Main, you can then use to charge up the Skull Bunny line. Um, Skull Bunny, meh. Reboot, eh, it's okay. 50 damage, it's okay. Cinderace is where it really comes together. 170 HP, so pretty tanky. Flame Cloak, again, 40 damage, you're getting that energy back, which works especially well because it has Bright Flame. 160 damage attack, which is pretty, pretty decent. Flip a coin, if tails, discard two energy from this Pokemon. Now again, this isn't the end of the world, because if you do this, you can still Flame Cloak to get energy back, or you can just retreat it, because it will still have one energy left. So you can then retreat the Cinderace back to your bench, spend some time charging it back up again, and then bring it back in later on. Cinderace is great. 
And because of that, this deck performs really, really well. Looking at the trainers, there aren't that many trainers that go out of the way and that are amazing. Ordinary Rod is a great way to mitigate some of Jumper's effect on your deck because it enables you to fetch cards from your discard pile and put them back into your deck. Two Pokemon, two energies. Try and use Ordinary Rod when you can get all four cards back. Now, again, it's got two switches. Use switch wisely. Even though this deck's got low retreat costs, switch can really make a difference. It would be really, really clutch. Especially with a support card, Bayday. Attach a basic energy card from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon. Now, you can use this very cleverly in the sense that you can, for instance, with Cinderace, who's now failed his, th his energy, uh, coin flip, he's down to one energy. You can use switch to switch one to your bench, attach an energy to him, and use Bayday to attach a second energy to him. Retreat, retreat the Pokemon that you um, switched him into with, so your Cinderace can come back in and get another big damage attack off. So, use Bayday wisely. It's a good way of getting energy ramp. Why this, is car this card is not in the Intellion deck, I don't understand. This is the card that would have made Intellion deck great. Well, not great, but good, better. I don't understand why this, de this card is in the Cinderace deck and is not in the Intellion deck. But, complaints aside, it's great in the Cinderace deck because it allows you to charge up energy even faster. So that is one of the reasons why the Cinderace deck does so well, is that it is able to get energy down on this Pokemon super, super quickly. So, looking at these three theme decks, I've gotten in third place, actually in second place tied, the more I think about it, until I can find a better way to play the Intellian theme deck. In third place, I would actually put the Intellian theme deck because of how frustrating it is to play. But in the current meta, it's tied for second with Rillaboom. These two decks perform relatively well. Even neglecting the fact that I got 50% win-loss ratios with them, I do think that they are pretty much tied in the current meta because of the current decks that are being played. Intellion is saved by the fact that there's so many fire decks. And Rillaboom is put down because of the fact that there's so many fire decks. So because of the current meta, I'll put these two decks at a very hard second. For me, they're quite a way behind the Cinderace theme deck. Got an 80% win loss ratio with this. The Cinderace deck is very easy to pick up and play. If you're looking at a theme deck and you're not sure which of the Sword and Shields you should pick up, the Cinderace deck is a very, very good choice. It's a good starting point, it's an easy theme deck to play, and it runs really, really well. In my opinion, of the, the of the three theme decks that are currently out there uh, from Sword and Shield, Cinderace does the best. And I feel like, I said earlier, I need more practice with Intellion to actually get a better view with it compared to Rillaboom. But if you're looking at a theme deck to pick up, I would recommend the Cinderace one. I've had a lot of fun playing it. It's great fun to play. And it's a good deck. It performs well. It's very reliable. Even with the amount of water decks out there, Drumper does save it because you can just sweep the Drumper. So play it smart and you'll do very well with it. If you have a differing opinion, please let me know down in the comments below which theme deck you think is better. I'm very interested to see what everyone else's opinions are, what theme decks you've picked up and how they perform for you. I do find that quite interesting. I wanna know how other people found them and how other people are playing them, especially with regards to the Intellion theme deck. As I said, I think that deck has a lot of potential and I haven't quite tapped it yet. So if you found a way to get it working, please do let me know. But yes, if you're looking at a theme deck, do you consider this Cinderace deck? Um, I've actually put off making this video for a while because I had a lot of debate which deck I felt performed better. Even looking outside of the win and loss ratios, which I'm using as a main, re a main argument to which deck works better. Even looking outside of that, this last week I really have been like an internal conflict of which theme deck I felt was better. And I really have set it on Cinderace because it's fun and it's good. So thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope this video, sorry, I helped. I hope this video 
helped you decide which of the three theme decks you wanted to pick up and give you a bit more of an overview of them. I have done an in-depth guide and look at all the cards. Uh, you can find that on this Pokemon playlist and on my channel. Please do consider liking and subscribing. It does help me out. Uh, it does help me know what content to produce and let me know what you want to see. I'm probably going to be having a few more event well, I want to start doing events with these three theme decks and see how they perform in the event format. And I definitely want to get a few more videos out there playing with these decks. So, thank you so, so much for watching, everyone. I really do appreciate it, and I hope these videos do help you out. Thanks again, everyone. Cheers. Enjoy.